Okay, so let's take a look at one of the examples here in uh, lesson five in this unit, which is an application of the sine law and also how to set up a question, um, particularly if they don't give you some hints um, as they do in this problem. So this is a question where we have uh, two different groups of people um, and they're heading out in different directions and they're using compass directions as their headings. So one of the things we need to look at doing here is um, just sketching um, directions here in terms of a compass. So a compass is just going to be an X and Y grid, but instead of using X and Y as the axes, we're going to label them north, south, west, and east. And it says here one of the groups is heading out due west for 1.2 kilometers. So I'm just going to darken in and put in a little line here. We would call this a vector, um, and they've head out for 1.2. The next group of people head north, but they're heading in a northeast direction and they're heading 60 degrees east off of north. So what that is, is the north is, is um, considered to be zero degrees and their line of travel is 60 degrees off of the north axis. So we'll mark in 60 and they are heading 2.0. No, that's not what the 2.9 is referring to. This is actually from the campsite. So you have to think of the origin of this graph as the campsite. So what we the triangle that we're forming here is where we connect the two heads of these two arrows together. So like this, and that the, the results of those two vectors moving in two different directions um, is equal to for, forms a triangle three-sided shape and then that distance between the two heads of the arrows is 2.9 kilometers okay so that's the important um, bits of information that we get from the triangle here now what we're asked to do is we're actually asked to find how far um, from how far is the second couple from the campsite? So how far is distance? And we're going from the campsite in when they are 2.9 kilometers um, apart from, from the first um, group of people. So this is what we can consider to be X. That's what we're asked to solve. So in a diagram like this, um, we have a lot of um, information and it's overlaid on a grid. So I like to take this triangle that we've drawn and just redraw it. I'll use a different color here without having the grid just so that it's a bit clearer of what we've seen and keep the same kind of basic shape. So it's a bit of a slanted triangle that looks like this. Um, we have 1.2 as one of the lengths. We know 2.9 is one of the other lengths and then we have an unknown here. So let's also label the triangle and then we can just use um, common terms A, B and C just to kind of figure out our points here. Um, and then this way, if we know, if we call this side angle A, then the missing side that we're asked to find is going to be um, little a, side A. So in this triangle, what we are also needing to find is, do we know any measures of the angles? Now we don't know what angle A or angle B is, but we do know what angle C is. Angle C is a combination of the 90 degrees from west to east, or sorry, west to north, plus the 60 degrees going east off of the north um, heading. So in total, this angle here is equal to 90 plus 60 degrees, which is 150 degrees. And if you think about how the the, the, um, the triangle is sketched. 150 degrees is greater than a 90 degree angle, so it should be opening up um, wider than, than the right angle. So we take 60 and we add it to the, the 90. So that would be the measure of angle C. So to, to just summarize what we're looking to find here, we've got a bunch of different values here. So I'm gonna start writing down my labels, angle A, side A, um, and start to make a table of what we know and what we don't know. Then we have angle B, side B, followed by angle C, 
inside C. Now, in this question, we actually don't need to find all of the different parts, but often in a question like this, it's going to take multiple steps to calculate one of the unknown quantities um, because we might have to go through a few different properties in order to get to that, 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 that piece. So if we look here, we don't know what angle A is. So we can't get a value for that. And we actually don't know what side A is either, little a. So that, we have to leave that blank. We don't also know what angle B is, but we do know the length of angle B. We know it's 1.2. Um, the only complete set of values that we know here is angle C, which is 150 degrees, and side C, which is 2.9 kilometers. So if we remember what our sine law is all about, it's about finding angle pairs and then calculating missing angles uh, or sides to go with that. So the only complete pair that we know here is, is um, uh, angle C and little c. So we could set up an equation that says the following. Um, let's look at trying to calculate angle B because we do know one of the lengths of the sides, but we don't know the angle. So this can tell us that sine C over little c is equal to sine B over little b. Now remember, we do know the complete pair for sine C, so this is going to be the sine of 150 all over 2.9 is equal to sine B all over little b, which we know is 1.2. So now we only have one unknown, and we're able to find the solution for this. So if I move this up here, we'll do sine b is equal to, and we just do a cross multiply, 1.2 times sine 150 all over um, 2.9. Now remember, we're finding what sine b is, but we have to convert that into an angle. So sine b is a decimal, 2068. Now you also have to remember, in order to find angle b, we have to take something called the inverse sine. So that's sine minus 1 in your calculator, 2.68, which is going to equal to um, a value of 11.9 degrees. So angle B we know is 11.9, but that doesn't tell us what the distance for um, A is, is, which is, remember, that is what you were really interested in finding. So we are going, we're going to have to go one step further um, on this question. Now, if we, we know a couple things about a triangle, we also know that there's 180 degrees in it. So let me just add another page to this uh, document here. Blank page so we can keep going. We know that um, in a triangle, um, there are 180 degrees. So the missing side for angle A we can say is equal to 180 minus the known angles, which is 11.9 and 150. So that can give us a value here of 18.1 degrees. So that helps us out with this value here, 18.1. Now angle A, or sorry, side A is the missing length. But again, we have a complete cosine, or a complete sine pair in fact, now we actually have two. We have a pair of angle B and side B, and angle C and side C. So we could use any one of those to calculate missing um, side A. So I can just go back to my original equation. Sine C over C is equal to sine, not B this time, but sine A over A. So to do that, we'll fill this in again. So this is sine of 150 over 2.9. And then sine A is equal to 18.1 degrees all over little a. That's what we need to find. So we're going to use the same calculation again, except this time we are not looking for an angle. We're looking for a side. So A is equal to cross-multiply 2.1 times sine 18.1 
all over sine 150. All right, and then this, when we work it through, and remember, just make sure your calculator is in degree mode when you're using your trig functions, you'll see A is equal to 1.8 kilometers, or 1.8. So that is the missing distance that the first group, or one of the groups, traveled from the campsite. It's 1.8. But you can see this took two, actually took three steps to work out. We did the first one, we had to find a missing angle. Then we had to calculate what the other missing angle was going to be by using the property of triangles, which is 180 degrees. And then finally, we plugged in um, a third step where we took one of our sine pairs, just angle and distance, and made it equal to the one that we're actually looking for. So this is a really good application of the sine law where you are given a problem where you have to sketch and the unknowns are set up in such a way that it, you can't get to the exact answer in one step. You will have to do a couple of steps and keep working them through. So the strategy that I would do in a question like this is to find all possible um, quantities. Okay, and usually in a triangle, what you're always looking for is you're looking for angle and then you're looking for some side value. So list all the pairs, A, B, and C, and then little a, little b, and little c, and go through step by step, fill in the values for each angle and side, and then see what's missing, and then look to work through a solution that solves those. This way you'll systematically go through this problem and you'll catch all the missing parts to it. And in fact, what you'll probably end up doing is you're going to calculate unknowns that the question doesn't ask for, but you need them to in order to solve the question. All right. So that's a strategy and a solution for number two. Um, use this method to go through the other problems, list everything in there, and then see what you come up with.